guys. I hope you enjoyed part one. Welcome back to part two with our hosts Baraka and Hansel and our guests Mr. and Mrs. Kilime where we continue with our conversation about marriage. about belonging to a church. I don't know how people survive outside of church. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about being in church is the church family kind of gives you a cover, a fallback plan. Yeah. We have brothers and sisters, we have dads and moms, yeah. aunties and uncles within church who can walk with you, whom you can invite mm -hmm. to come and help you out if you have any challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that safety net. Yeah. Then, of course, above that, we have also pastors. Yeah. Most of us, as pastors, we are trained. That is part of our orientation in terms of pastoral care. Yeah. So, again, these are people that you can always come and say, hey, Pasi, you know, there is yeah. this or the other yeah. that is not connected yeah. well, and we would want you to just come and you know, speak to us. Yeah. Um, uh, besides, also, the pastors, we have now trained counselors. Mm -hmm. marriage therapists yeah. who are in the church yeah. and uh, normally what we do as pastors when we probably are overwhelmed by the numbers of people who want to come for counseling mm -hmm. we direct them to such people yeah. who are professional and who will sit you down in a very objective way and uh, deal with each matter yeah. in a way that is above board without any favoritism or partiality so again i would want to encourage couples that are struggling, uh, particularly for you young people as you get now into life and settling yeah. in, uh, don't be lone rangers, don't yeah. be removed from other people. Because when you are removed, it's like you fight your fights, there's nobody to help you out. But when you are part of the church main flow, whether you are in a Bible study or a fellowship or a ministry, or like as I said, you can be able to approach your pastor, yeah. these are people who are resources that can come in yeah. to help you resolve your issues. Yeah. Because I must say, Baraka, that there is a time in marriage when probably the two of you cannot see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be very bad, yeah. sometimes very nasty. Yeah. And so you don't allow this thing to go on too long. Mm -hmm. That is the time you need to throw a lifeline yeah. and uh, let somebody yeah. help you out. Yeah. So that's where now, as I said, pastors come in. We have marriage therapists also in the yeah. church who are available and counselors. Uh, and I don't think it removes anything from you yeah. to involve other people in your marriage yeah. issues. Yeah. Other than you sinking down. When people can see you're sinking, mm -hmm. but because you're not calling out for help, yeah. the marriage just disappears. Yeah. And uh, Hansel, you'll be very surprised. I'm talking about two years, three years in marriage. Mm -hmm. That is how soon people are going down. Yeah, very, very upset. And I think that many couples don't want to let their things out there because you want to look like the proper couple, the ones to be related, and you're suffering. And we are shy to reach out for help. And the privilege we have, specifically in CETA, we put, with these classes, the premarital classes, we put people in what we call MCCGs, the marriage uh, enrichment care groups, so that as you begin, you are actually already in a group. You got married maybe in the same year. So you become accountability partners. Right. Yeah. You have three or so couples, mm -hmm. you start together, you're getting your children together, you're moving step by step together. You get to know each other so well that you actually listen together and say, ah, ah, jana, ah, jana, and yeah. the other people come in and you talk mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I think it's very helpful yeah. where you realize, oh, so it's not just the one struggling with whoever. Yeah. Yeah. So even them, they're going, ah, yeah, yeah. that's yesterday. So you, you are vulnerable to one another. 
you can become accountability partners yeah. and you grow together in marriage. I think yeah. it's very healthy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I want to say that we need to talk about careers. Uh, in marriage, I think everyone comes to a marriage and they have maybe different careers mm -hmm. and different goals in life. But so how do you how do you prioritize both individual goals and now personal goals? Uh, you know, individual goals and now together with mm -hmm. couple goals. Yeah, because for example, maybe I put a scenario for you have um, as you know, Islam can send you from God to the school move yeah. to turn to a rest. And now sometimes you have to approach your family and maybe mom has a career in a So how do you yeah, because you are moving, this is your personal career, you are moving and the mom still has to stay in Nairobi, but you still have to be together mm -hmm. as, a, as a couple. So how do you maneuver that? Yeah. Incidentally, it's not just pastors that are normally transferred. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was raised up in a family where my dad was a civil servant. And one time we are in Yen, another time we are in uh, Kilifi, <laughs> another time we are in Nakuru yes. or Kisumu. So, it also happens with other people, other yeah. than us pastors. Yeah. I think that's what I just wanted to lay out. Yeah. Uh, but that's a very good question because yeah. um, I always say that uh, the family that plans together is a family that stays together. Mm -hmm. So as a couple, you have to find a way in which you can align and synchronize your functions and your future plans. Like now I cannot just decide I want to go and do it, but I don't know. Yeah. I have to <laughs> consult. Yes, I have to consult with her. I have to bounce it off her so that yeah. I get to hear and know what her feelings are. Yeah. Uh, but coming more specifically to ministry. You know, ministry is a call. Eh? Yeah. It is not just any other work. Yeah. And when I got married to her, she got married to me and of course also got to know that uh, later on, of course, as we prayed, that I was going to go into ministry. Yeah. So she was aware about that. Yeah. And uh, for us, it has not been about my ministry. It has now been our, our ministry. ministry. Yeah. Yeah, so where I go, she goes. Yeah. Yeah, what I do, we do together. Mm -hmm. And that way then it has become easier to serve yeah. with one another, to complement each other. And thank God, she says I preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we it complements each other. Yeah. That way, as we do whatever we are doing in the in the church, yeah. we are there together, and it is not like I am just doing my thing yeah. and she is on the side. Yeah. So I think when people complement each other mm -hmm. in, in terms of what they do, yeah. it makes life easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in a case where I've come home now, you see, you guys have kept me up to this hour. <laughs> I know my mouth is waiting. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy is quite a bit of a so, you know, it can bring a lot of conflict. By the way, that's where conflict begins from. Yeah. When two people are not synchronized yeah. and they are not in sync in terms of uh, what the other person does, yeah. it can be a point of conflict. Mm -hmm. So, the other thing, again, also in our being together, we also wanted to develop ourselves. Yeah. So, there was a time when I was in school and she would be supportive of me. There are other times when she was in school, I needed to be supportive of her. Because there are things in the family and home front that yeah. require both of us. Yeah. And I don't have to be upset now that my wife is not there, I cannot eat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes she comes, she finds I've already cooked, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so she has come as a student to be, you know. I hope I'm not uh, looking out of the blue yet. <laughs> it may look like we are being or superficial. No, no, no. These are realities of yes. life. Yes. Where two people must be back to back with one another. Yes. Must complement each other, yes. must be supportive of one another. Yes. And uh, that way, even when you're coming to plan, whether it's in terms of how many children you want to have, yeah. where we should invest, yeah. you know, where we should go for holiday, you know, uh, who should be our close friends, mm -hmm. it is something that we have learned to do together. Yeah. And by virtue of doing those things together, I'm telling you, it has brought less friction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been much easier to move in yeah. the life yeah. as friends. Just, just to add on that, I was not always available in church like this. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a eight to five job. Mm -hmm. 
career and it was a very busy office. Mm -hmm. I used to travel, used to travel a lot, both of us, yeah. but we were intentional. Mm -hmm. So that at one point in the year, we make sure when the children are on holiday, I take leave, he takes leave, and we spend a whole month together. Either go to holiday or whatever, or even if you're staying at home or going up country, we spend that one month together. Uh, but later on in life, actually not too long ago, maybe about five or so years ago, yeah. is when I took an early retirement and I'm even I'm much more available. But I think what he was talking about was teamwork. Yeah. So that when he was busy and I was busy, we still made sure that we had family yeah. time. Yeah. We still yeah. made sure we had time to, to be together. Yeah. 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 And I'd also say, mm -hmm. like this probably also, uh, I don't know how it may come out to other people out there yeah. is that um, uh, when people are separated because of career or because of uh, academic reasons, yeah. um, it, it, sometimes those things are inevitable. Yes. But I usually say, let it be for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. yes. But when it becomes a protracted period mm -hmm. where one person is living in Mombasa, another one is in and it goes on five, years. ten years. years. That is not healthy for marriage. Dangerous. That is not healthy for marriage. Dangerous. Or if you are the type who flies in and out every other day, you don't even have time to be with family. At some point, you may even have to change your career mm -hmm. or rearrange yourself. And sometimes, I normally tell people, point blank, there are certain careers that are not family. family, family. family. If you want to run a family, you <laughs> cannot <laughs> continue doing those jobs. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell you first, yeah. because there are certain things that we do in life in terms of career that just are not family friendly. Yeah. Yeah, they don't give you time to be with your family. You are yeah. flying left, right, and center, or you are with these people, or you know, you find you are away from the family. Or if you are going to study, you know, as I said earlier on, even if you are going to study, yeah. uh, then it's either we go together or it's we don't go at all. Yeah. Or it's a short time. Yeah. But not where I go for four oh, years, yes. five years, and yeah. away from a family. Those are the kind of things that have brought a lot of strain yeah. on families and uh, marriages, yeah. uh, which could have thrived just now dwindling. Yeah. Yeah, because when people are away from one another, yeah. I normally yeah. say long distance relationships are one of the hardest. Yeah. Yeah, because when say, God says it is not good for a man to be alone. <laughs> It means that companionship is a priority in yeah. anybody's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, now let's bring it back to oh. the two of you. Yes. You have been together for 31 years. So, what, what is this that has kept you two together for that long? What keeps you going as individuals to make this marriage work continuously? First of all, we mentioned about friendship. Yeah. We are friends before husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Then we are children of God as well. Um, and you want the best for your friend. Yeah. So you do the best for your friend. So it's not just about roles and responsibilities. You pay rent and you don't know. We can also laugh. We can also go have a cup of tea outside the home. Yeah. We can also go and visit an old person who needs. We can, you know, do things together. I think teamwork, mm -hmm. teamwork really, really uh, is key for a married couple. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling uh, wives to be supportive. Yeah. I'm not saying men should not be supportive, yeah. but it's easier for me to get into his program yeah. than him getting into mine, especially because of being uh, a pastor. Yeah. Um, so just be flexible enough to to support one another. I think teamwork. And it is never too serious. Some marriages are so serious. We can't even laugh. Straight we can't even, know you. Uh, we can't even <laughs> joke about anything. Yeah. It is, I make your food, you eat. You I you clean eat. your clothes. You <laughs> go to sleep. You go to work. Yeah. You can you can make time. We even play games. We we do a lot of board games. We do scrabbles. Scrabbles. And other things. We don't have much time right now. But when would 
get time to make those kind of things. Or go wherever. I like to work. So I just do things together which yeah. are not husband and wife responsibilities necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Then when there is danger, find faith in marriage. Don't let it go easily. Say, even if I'm a child of Sarah, fight for it. Yeah, fight for it. Let the other person know that you value this relationship and you're fighting for it. And you see, marriage, you invest so much in it. Not only in monetary terms, your emotions, your yeah. time, your substance. You actually sacrifice yourself on the altar of marriage. So just walking out and letting it go yeah. is not doing service to the same. So also fight for your marriage. Yeah. Guard your marriage. Mm -hmm. Maybe just to yes. add a joint on that, what mm -hmm. we mean by the center yeah. is uh, having what we call a family altar. Mm -hmm. A family altar is where yes. we pray together yeah. and read the word of God together. Yeah. And also in the same spirit of being uh, one another's keeper is that when you're spiritually healthy, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, but when yeah. you're not spiritually healthy, I'm also not going to be happy. Yeah. But many of Most probably, they will also have a healthy emotional relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, if you are not spiritually healthy, it is very possible to keep a grudge and even yeah. become enraged mm -hmm. and a bitter. Yeah. But you see, the Spirit of God does not allow you yeah. to do that yeah. if you are in tune. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would also add to what my wife has said in terms of longevity in marriage is don't walk alone, have friends. And one of the things that has helped us is to have other couples around us that we call friends. Yeah. And that helps in terms of accountability. Yeah. Uh, we have people who uh, know what is going on with us. Yeah. And we also know what is going on with them. Yeah. No, not that we are praying and uh, policing each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that uh, accountability is very key. Yeah. And so don't be born rangers as a couple. Yeah. Associate other people into your life uh, as you mentor each other, as you grow with one another. Yeah. Uh, it, it gives you a safety net because life also is not a straight line. Yes. There are times when things just go down, yeah. and when you have friends like those people whom you can call on, people who uh, believe in you and you believe in them, yeah. they also help you quite a bit. For sure. And I think lastly, the other aspect in terms of longevity. Again, having a life where you value family. Uh, there are some people who don't value family, so you'll find they invest much of their time outside of the family, other than in the family. Yeah, like if you are to calculate the percentage of time they spend outside of the family, you'll find that probably even some can be 60 and above. Yeah, yeah. Uh, way out of I think for me, the more time you spend with family, the lesser opportunity for conflict. Yeah. The more, the, the, the lesser you spend, the more easy it will be for conflict. Yeah, because you are estranged to one another. Yeah. You are not there for each other when the other person needs the other person. Yeah. So the more you are together, uh, the more it's easier yeah. to continue perpetuating your marriage. What, what, what I want to ask, as it's good that you guys have observed that with our generation, there's so much um, information through mm -hmm. online, social media, you know, and now what happens do you give a young couple that probably will observe it? You know, in this day and age, there is so much of, if he doesn't do this and that, you're out, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. You may hear, mm -hmm. I walk. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, yeah. 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 the females who have, you know, these friends 
who, who give them wrong advice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They tell them, if he doesn't do this or that, yeah. you go, if he doesn't pay for your meals, run away. Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't probably cook for you and put flowers at the door when you enter, yeah. 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 you take a look at what? Yeah. So this is and so much information mm. from that, that, that tell the young people, you know, if he doesn't do this, if she doesn't do this, then she's not for you. What advice would you give the young people who are in this situation where they're receiving so much and so wrong? What I would say to the young people here, I think let us be authentic, let us be realistic, because much of the things that we are trying to engage in trying to overproject ourselves and having expectations that are definitely not workable here or now. Um, again, like I said earlier on, is that it is a journey of life. It is, it is not, uh, like we used to say, it's not a hundred meter dash. Yeah. Uh, marriage is a marathon. Yeah. And marathon you have to keep on running and don't throw in the towel. Yeah. Keep on going because you know the goal that you want to attain. Mm -hmm. It is not a hundred meter dash because hundred meter dash before you know it, the thing is finished. Yeah. Uh, but for marriage, is uh, you have to grow the muscles of endurance, mm -hmm. of patience, yeah. and also the muscles of being flexible. Yeah. Because again, if you're too rigid, uh, you, you find that you cannot easily bring in the other person's opinion. But there has to be flexibility where there's give and take. Yeah. And also uh, realizing that in as much as we have the social media, but the social media is not real. Yeah. It is ideal, you know, and the things which are ideal are not practical. Yeah. And sometimes also some of it is not really People are acting, you know, and people are acting, they are doing a, a play. Yeah. Yeah. And so some of the things that they bring in mm -hmm. may not necessarily be real yes. life happenings. Mm -hmm. uh, although I don't want to say that everything that we see is not real. Yeah. Uh, what we are saying is that we have to also see and uh, remove those things that we know are a counter to the family life. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the other thing that our young people also need to be cautious about is, yeah. is foreign ideologies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the different lifestyles that are being introduced now, where you know, people are telling us now it's not about a man and a woman, yeah. it's about a man and a man. Uh, it shows just that we are living in an age and time when everything is suggesting marriage, not be what it used to be. Yes. It's like it needs to transmorphize into something else, which is not the case. Yeah. You know, if there's any institution that God has given that has transcended over time, this is marriage. Yes. How about you? What, what can you tell people who uh, are learning negatively, young ladies who are learning negatively from social media? Uh, because you talk about and you are told, uh, you know, women of these days, there's a CEO women, a corporate women, you don't have to cook, we just order, we just order it. So, because <laughs> <laughs> we have money to order it, so you yeah. need, need to know how to cook. So, so, how can you tell the young ladies? What can you tell the young ladies who live with that mindset and that mentality? For the young ladies, I would say that uh, we need to be real. Because as much as you have money to order in, is it also healthy for you? Mm -hmm. And you are not cooking for this person because you are a slave. Yeah. There are times when things happen, maybe you are unwell or whatever. The person can also cook. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe let me first of all address both. Let's be there for one another. Yeah. So as much as we have roles and responsibility, yeah. most likely the lady will be cooking and the man will be doing other things. Yeah. Let's not have hard and, and, and rigid rules. 
so that if I'm unwell, my husband cannot cook because cooking is my issue. Yeah. And uh, laziness is not a good thing. Even the Bible talks about it. Yeah. Let's be active. Let's be proactive. I want to make something good. Even, okay, now that we are exposed to social media, yeah. go to that YouTube, see some recipe, copy it, do it and come and make it even better than what you saw. Yeah. And feel proud about it. Yeah. You're not being a slave. Yeah. And God has actually given the woman that skill. So why not enjoy the gift that God has given you? I normally uh, give this example. When you are in your home before you get married as a young lady, yeah. when you see your dad hungry, you really feel it. Oh, daddy is feeling so hungry. And you can easily run to the kitchen yeah. and give him <laughs> So why not your husband? Why is it different when it is a husband? Yeah. You want to order him because he's not your dad. Yeah. In the, the same way you feel about your dad, and oh, daddy is so hungry. Oh, my husband is so hungry, let me fix something. Yeah. And be proud of what you're fixing. Yeah. He talked about corporate women. I've been one for 20 something years. Mm. I was working with a parastator. Very busy place, mm. very busy office. Yeah. But there were days I told my husband, let's do ABCD for me. I will still cook. Yeah. Because, first of all, I enjoy cooking. Second of all, I just want to do my duty. I want to add my, my own personal touch onto it. Because yeah. if you're just eating what other people make throughout or you're ordering him. Of course there's a time to order him. Of course my son would really like to say, what are we ordering today? Especially <laughs> on Sundays when I, like now I can't go and yeah. start cooking. Yeah. But it is something to be proud of. Yeah. You're not being a slave. You don't have to be always on the defense thinking it is a bad thing to cook, it is a bad thing to wash clothes, it is a bad thing. No. Yeah. But I think what would then help is if we compliment one another. Yeah. So that the men also can also be able to help because one can get tired, can also be monotonous. When God blesses you with children and you have so much to do, if you don't help one another, that is where now some families then split. Yeah. But being a corporate woman, being a CEO, being the senior pastor as a lady does not stop you from having your duties. You can still do those duties as a CEO, as a corporate woman. And enjoy it. Be proud of it. Do it well. It feels good when your husband tells people there is nobody who can cook like my wife. No and they're not, yes, and they're not making it up. Yeah. And it is true. Yeah. And you feel good when you're complimented. Right. You want to go back and do something yeah. even better. Go oh, better. Yes. yes. Oh, I enjoy cooking. I enjoy cooking. Not because of my generation. <laughs> because of who I am. <laughs> Um, we yeah, are come to the end. Uh, yeah, sadly, it was very <laughs> amazing because that you are having. Yes. It was so insightful um, learning about your marriage, how you kept it alive, mm -hmm. what you do, and then quite a few others. Um, maybe as a part of choice, mm -hmm. rather than mom. Yeah. Uh, for young people now, our age who want to enter into relationships, what, can we, what advice can we tell us? Um, our parents say, who care for us and love us as young people, what can you tell us when you want to pursue a love and relationship that hopefully will be into marriage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Brother uh, Kripalat. Yeah. I would uh, say as a passion, parting shot, that yeah. um, marriage is good. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and especially when you give yourself wholeheartedly yeah. and you are genuine to one another and then as I said just maintain that friendship. Uh, the beauty about marriage is also um, an institution that kind of matures you in many things in terms of how you organize yourself, how you aspire for things. Like my wife, you know, she's an entrepreneur, she, she's the enterprising type and uh, she has brought that you know, angle into my life. Yeah. And that has added value to me. So I would say that marriage is about two people adding value to one another. It's a place where uh, there is a sense of significance, a sense of belonging, people who value you, and people who you know can be there with you up to the very last day. So it's a place I would want to encourage anyone For me, I would say 
before you get into a relationship, pray, 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 mm. and pray someone. I know she's very beautiful, but what you see here is not necessarily what you see inside. Yeah. I know he's very handsome and you can't resist him, but pray as a child of God, pray. Be sure you are in God's will. Yeah. 